Welcome to the Real Estate Marketing Podcast. My name is Jerome Lewis. I'm your host for today. The Real Estate Marketing Podcast is a podcast where we talk marketing, tech, business, and leadership. We talk these things for real estate agents, real estate investors, and real estate entrepreneurs. The Real Estate Marketing Podcast is a podcast that has two purposes. Purpose number one, to, to educate and inform our audience and listeners. Purpose number two, John, to spotlight you, your business, your service, or your product in a way that provides value to you, including market exposure and content creation. With that, we have a very special guest, John Lee. John stumbled upon the real estate industry by chance in early 2017 while searching for his own home. Since then, he has acquired and sold investment properties of his own and helped numerous clients find their dream homes. With a keen sense of the market and an extensive knowledge of the various neighborhoods in Philadelphia and surrounding suburbs, John has his finger on the pulse of the industry. Despite having more than a decade of successful sales experience under his belt, both in and outside of the real estate industry, John remains humble enough to admit that he is always learning. He firmly believes that the real estate industry demands exceptional service, and his top priority is to provide genuine value to his clients. John, I'm excited that you're here for episode number two. Welcome to the show. Yo, what's good, Jerome? I wish I could have uh, that kind of intro in my podcast. That thing was actually pretty bad. <laughs> That's pretty dang, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, John. So uh, I always like to tell people, like, tell us your story and how you got to where you are today. Um, we talked about a little bit of it in your intro, but we want to hear it in your own words. Yeah. So, you know, a couple of years ago, it's been very, it was a, even at that time, a very difficult time for people to buy and sell homes. And uh, especially for buying and, uh, you know, being an FHA buyer, um, you know, my wife and I, we really didn't have a lot of money. And uh, every offer that we, 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 you know, put on on a home, we ended up losing. And uh, we were so frustrated that it came to a point where we were actually like looking through the MLS and we found uh, a foreclosed home. And, you know, I wasn't thinking much of it at the time. And we looked at it and, you know, like it, it, it just became a vision for both of us when we actually like thought it through and uh, in like unintentionally, we didn't know we were house hacking. Right. But that's exactly what we did. We actually decided to buy a duplex that was run down. Uh, we fixed it up. We rented out one of the units and we're still living here today. So where I'm actually speaking right now is in this very duplex. Okay. Uh, where we're, and tell us what house hacking is in simple terms. Yeah, ha house hacking is uh, coined as a term where you live in one of the units and then you rent out uh, the others if you have multiple units. And that's exactly what we did. We, we, we decided to live in one of the units and then rent out the other. And it, it just became a gateway for me to start my real estate investing career. And it came to a point and I have a funny TikTok on it, but it came to a point that I thought it was a great idea to <laughs> be a real estate agent myself. So uh, when I got my license, unintentionally, I started getting clients because I started posting on social media. And that was like one thing where, like, I know you were always harping on me to post on social media, post on social media. I don't know if you remember these days, Jerome, but I, I don't. Dude, you used to always harp on me posting on social media, doing video content and all of that. And I was very, I, honestly, I, I come from a very uh, shy and like a cultural background where it's not, uh, I don't want to say it's acceptable, but like culturally for me, like you never wanted to like shine, right? Or like mm -hmm. put yourself out there. And um, I just kind of grew up that way. And, you know, when you're, when you think, and, and when you have that limiting belief to think that way for so long, um, you actually believe it. And it came to a certain point where I had to be uncomfortable to be or I had to be comfortable to be uncomfortable. Right. So I put myself out there, started posting. And the long story short, and which I'm kind of getting to here, is that I started getting clients as a part time agent. Right. And um, from part time, I actually decided to move full time. And this is actually the first year where I'm actually going full time as a real estate agent. Nice. So you mentioned that you started posting on social media. What was that like? What was the content that you were posting and that was attracting people to become your client? I think what attracts a lot of people is kind of like what you see on TV, like the before and afters. So when I was renovating homes for flips or rentals or anything like that, 
I would always have a before and after. And then every, 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 like every other post, it's like a very subtle, Hey, I'm a real estate agent, by the way. And that's how I started getting some DMS. I started getting some people that were asking me if I could help them, you know, buy or sell a house. And the content you were posting, cause you, you mentioned that I was like, Oh, do social media. Was it like, uh, was it video content? Was it like pictures? What was that content like? I, I think at that point, vertical started getting like what I mean by vertical, like vertical, like uh, content was starting to get more popular because of TikTok. Um, I still didn't have a TikTok account when you told me to get it and when you told me to post on all the other social media. Um, but like this past year was actually the year where I went full all in and it's kind of funny because now people know me as John Lee real estate or some people would in passing <laughs> joke about how I do real estate. So it actually makes me feel good because I know that people are at least watching it. Maybe those two, three people that are. <laughs> wow. That's, that's interesting. Cause I didn't know that I'm like learning this. This is new to me. Yeah. Yo, bro, so John it, Lee real estate. Yo bro. A lot of that, a lot of that has to do with you, man. A lot of it was your influence. Thank you. You just made my day. I appreciate hearing that. Um, Dang, you, you caught me off guard. So we'll go to the questions. Uh, what's one thing your business or successful venture, what's one thing you, what's one thing your business or successful venture did ha happen that you didn't expect? Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I actually got in, well, I got my, as I mentioned to you guys before, I got my real estate license only to use it initially as a real estate investor. So I want to be very clear about that and as i mentioned to you also before i just started posting on social media like the before and afters of, of some of my remodels strictly as an investor just to show people hey you know these are some of the things that i've done and that even that jerome was very hard for me only because i like i i felt like i was being cocky or arrogant or like mm -hmm. showing myself off right and um just going back to what i was saying before like it it, it was a battle of like me feeling that way and my limiting belief that like I was being arrogant, but in reality, it's actually like the complete opposite. I'm helping a lot of people and I'm informing a lot of people about the real estate world. So just like you, I'm like, so I'm like major, a major introvert. I don't like putting myself out there. Yeah. I don't like showing off. I don't like any of that stuff. But just like you had a revelation and it was like, you can't do that because it's selfish. It and if you want to be blessed, you have to go serve other people despite what you're like, despite what my feelings are. So that's how, that's why I got into like the marketing and doing all this stuff because it was like, it's not fair. You have talents, you have gifts. Some people are going to like you. Some people won't, but you got to put it out there and let people choose because that's selfish. And then if you start thinking about it on a higher level, it's like, you know, you got spirituality and God, it's really not fair when we sit there and not in serve that, people in that way. So I'm hundred percent there with you. In fact, uh, you know, to kind of add that, like, like, like most people who actually see me in a social setting would have no idea that I'm actually an introverted person. So my Myers Briggs is an INFJ or INFP kind of teeter totters. And, uh, they think that I'm very, extroverted but in reality i'm actually very introverted but i know how powerful it is to be part of a community or be part of you know interacting with other people you know and i value it that much that i'm willing to be uncomfortable you know for a couple of hours and talk to people so i'm hoping this encourages a lot of other people in that way i i I, I'm grateful that you had that you talked about what you talked about today because I was just expecting to show you off and then you're like you went and you talked on some um, interesting stuff that we've been through together and I think that's very valuable I think people people appreciate like those emotional um, sure. you know sessions so uh, tell tell us about a common myth uh, within the field like whether it's a, an investor or being a realtor and um, you know why you disagree with it yeah. So the common myth that I find quite often as a realtor is that I think most people think it's like HGTV or selling sunset where you go in, you show houses. And that's like, honestly, the, that's the most fun, uh, part of the job, like showing in, like going actually meeting with people. But 
the more successful agents you find actually have quite of a reg reg regimented schedule and they're time blocking. So what I mean by that, and this is how crazy my schedule is just so that everyone understands. And I'm actually looking at my calendar here, so I'm kind of cheating, but uh, so from, uh, I wake up at six and then from 6.30 to 7.30, I am uh, praying, I am having my affirmations in the morning, I'm visualizing, I'm exercising, I'm reading and I'm scribing. Okay, from 6.30 to 7.30, from 7.30 to 8, I am role playing, not all the time, but most of the times I'm role playing on Zoom with a couple of partners that I have, a couple of other real estate agents. So role playing, what that is, Jerome, is you are practicing your skills, you're honing your crafts, right? So if you're practicing on expired listing or practicing for an appointment, I'm doing those things on Zoom with a group of other real estate agents eight to nine i'm hitting the phones so i'm calling expired listings uh expired listings what they are are people who have uh listings that no longer on the market so other agents are now calling them so i'm calling from eight to nine nine to ten i'm following up with all my emails ten to eleven i'm going through my pipeline for my spheres uh eleven to twelve i'm prepping and eating lunch and i mean even from the time to I eat and then also from when I'm working out, uh, I'm working out. It, yeah, my workout is from 6.30 to 7.30, sometimes 8.30. So even from the time I work out and even from the time I go to bed, eat, like everything has to be blocked out as a real estate agent because at least the successful ones, because there is a lot of time that's given to you and you just need to make the best use of it every single day. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And I find that, like in my experience, I have like this planner that I created. I don't have a copy, but um, a lot of my clients and even my students, they come to me and they're like, typically they want help with marketing. And like, that's a big part of the business, but you got to be organized. You got to be structured. And it's like, I'm like, okay, one of the things I do is I take them through exercise. I'm like, okay, okay what is your day like? I don't have time. I don't have time to generate leads and have phone calls. I'm always doing showings and sellings. And then we sit down and we do the exercise. And it's like, oh my God, I actually do have all this time. Mm -hmm. And it's so much more than people think because we sat down, we did the exercise and like, okay, time block. What are you doing between here and here? They're losing so much time because they're not keeping track of their time and time blocking like what you're saying. Exactly. And what I would recommend everyone who is a real estate agent or not even a real estate agent, just an entrepreneur is if you have a hard time time blocking, you're going to have to suck it up and say, okay, like literally write what you're doing every single minute. Like, so for, if you're brushing your teeth from this to this, then write it down, you know? And, and again, it's a, it's a very difficult exercise, but you're going to look at that schedule and you're going to figure out, okay, what's the highest and best use? Cause there's certain things that you can delegate and there's certain things that you can obviously, you know, realize that, Hey, it's actually not the best use of your time. Yeah. What you said is like, I take them, I'm like, write everything down, everything. And then we yep. go through process of elimination, brushing my teeth, getting in the shower, going to sleep. It's all written down. Some of it is still on my calendar, yep. but you get it all out so you can find out what's going on and where you're wasting your time. So you can like actually be more productive because that's, I think that's like the biggest thing. Like they, there's like, we're like not organized. A lot of people don't have goals and are like, oh, I need this thing. Typically they want the thing. But it's not really that what they're looking for is a is a bunch of other stuff. So I appreciate you sharing. Uh, tell us the biggest challenge you're facing in your business and how you're tackling it. So, I mean, although I've had my real estate license for about four or five years now, I you know I had a full time job uh, during that time. So technically, this is the first year as I as I think I mentioned uh, mm -hmm. where I've been full time, and. When you have a decade of over sales experience, it's easy to come into this industry in any industry, right? And especially being a realtor and think that you know it all, right? But I would have to say that this is probably the hardest career that I've ever started. Most, most of my sales careers were pretty linear. So imagine me having a stack of leads, right? Yeah. So you just get to call them yep. and they just say, Hey, call it. And the the process that sales process was pretty linear so what i mean by that it was it was either yes do you want it yes or no and 
there are so many moving parts when you're a realtor because the decision isn't as simple, right? Like yes. a lot, most of these people are making one of the biggest decisions in their entire life. And it's not as simple as a yes or a no. It's actually a highly relational business. And for, I would say about eight years of my career, maybe a little less, it was highly transactional, which isn't, it can still work it, as a realtor. However, most people that know me um, can also attest that I'm actually a very personable person and it's not in my natural instinct to be transactional. So that was one of the hardest uh, transitions for me to really learn not just the sales process, but actually like the whole aspect, for example, like being organized and having a set schedule and, you know, uh, there's so many other moving parts, which I could describe, but it'd probably take like another <laughs> 30 minutes, but I'm hoping that makes sense. It does make sense. And um, I, I agree with you. It's like not linear. And I I'm surprised you like you get into business because we do like it is sales. It is some sales, but it's not linear. Like there is a process. And like you said, people are making the biggest decisions of their life. And that's going to take some time. That's simply that takes time. No, no matter how much we want to rush it, it takes time. And I'll show people stats and statistics. And it's like people don't say yes right away. You got to build a relationship. Mm -hmm. You got to build that relationship first. So always, always. Um, next question. Did you always you already told us, but I'm going to ask you this question anyway. Did you always want to be a realtor? Right. You started off as an investor. You told us about you and your wife and getting a house. Like, tell us a little bit more, like how you got into being a realtor versus just an investor and why you did it. You know, give us. Yeah. I mean, to, to answer that question a little bit better uh, and 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 I was kind of a little hesitant to really answer this question. But I want to be real with my audience because I do plan on putting this out there for my audience to hear. Um, I've always had my license. I think every I think I already explained that to people right about four or five years ago. Um, okay. But my intention was never really to be full time, not only because of me just being an investor, but I was actually in sales like Medicare sales, right, for the past four or five years. And most people in my community and sphere actually know who I've worked for in my Medicare sales industry. But I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going to be real and say that my boss and the person who I thought was my friend had actually fired me without notice. And I've been working for him for about four or five years. And this is actually the reason why this part of the big reason why I got into real estate as a realtor full time. So it was a very tough decision. Um, but also something that I had to do because um, it, 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 it really hurt me because I, I worked for this person for four or five years, uh, you know, pretty much as a startup. I was his first hire. Um, you know, I brought uh, my best friend into the business. Um, I've also helped him train multiple other uh, agents. Uh, and I did all this pro bono. I built a really good relationship with him. And I made it also very clear to him that my intention wasn't to work uh, for him forever, right? Because I was getting into real estate. I think I, that part was pretty clear. Um, what wasn't entirely clear was how much production he wanted from me, right? So <clears throat> I slowly started to exit and obviously my production levels were going down, right? Naturally, but one thing that you have to understand about being in insurance sales, especially in Medicare, is you get paid residually. So that's why I I didn't care whether or not I was producing, you know, more. I, I was still getting paid for all the clients I'd already had. And when you work for four or five years, you do you do amount a decent book, you know. And uh, for I would say like three or four months into it, I wasn't getting paid. And then I called him and I still remember these words, Jerome. Uh, he said that he he cut me out. That was literally his words. His words said he cut me out. And I've never felt. Uh, more betrayed. Yeah, I, I never yeah. felt more betrayed. Like, I don't think that had ever happened to me in my entire life where someone who I I mean, he wasn't best friends with me or anything like that. But I, I grew up with him in the church, you know. And um, 
it was something where I felt like the least that he could have done for me was at least told me, you know, up front, like, hey, these are the rules. And if, you know, if you don't, you know, abide by these rules or, you know, the guidelines as far as production levels, then I think personally for me, I thought the least that, that, that he could have told me was what I needed to do, right? How much I needed to produce, but you know, um, that happening to me had definitely, and still is a stumbling block for me to overcome. And again, I, I, I really was, <clears throat> I really was, how do I say this guys? Like I really was hesitant to share this story, but again, I think it also can encourage a lot of people to let them know that, Hey, like I'm not a perfect person. I go through a lot of adversity that I probably don't show on my Instagram or my TikToks, but this is something that I wanted to share everything that was real. And I'm hoping that people can understand that. I think they do. And uh, I'm big on like vulnerability and sharing what's out there because everybody likes to share the good stuff. Yeah. I share everything. I share the bad. I share when I make a mistake. I share when I mess up. I share all of it. And um, this is one of my favorite episodes yet because you're being that way. You know, most people look good and they don't share the other stuff. But I like I appreciate when people share the other thing. Um, I want to skip the next question because what you said is um, I'm going to flip what we just talked about. Sure. Um, so. The, the next question I have is like, if you would give yourself, if you if you could give your 18 year old self one piece of advice, what would it be? But instead of 18 year old, John, I would like to, I would like you to give advice to John that got f- cut out. What kind of advice would you give him? Oh man. Does that make really? sense? Yeah. 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 Um, I, at that point where, where I realized that someone had cut me out of, uh, as someone who I thought that, you know, what I, I thought was friends, um, that person, right, made a business decision. And looking at it now, I know that it was a business decision. And arguably, people can say that it actually wasn't a bad thing, you know, and I, I can completely understand that, too, you know. Um, and at that point, I realized that I can't work for someone that I am truly destined to be an entrepreneur and i'm truly destined to lead i've always been hesitant to be a leader i've been a follower for so many years and even up to this point where i you know i was still hesitant but there are so many leadership roles that i'm starting to try to fulfill in my um in my you know in my religious life in my community life in my community and also in my career. So uh, the advice that I can give uh, to my slightly younger self is to to grow up, to be a leader. I, I like that because I appreciate that. I, I, I like how you're holding yourself accountable here uh, and having the conversations and saying the stuff that you know you need to and you're supposed to do. I appreciate that. You're like, I, I was supposed to bend step up and be a leader. And that's why I got what I got. And you're being accountable today. I really appreciate yeah. that. Um, we talked about some of your failures, but I still want to ask this question. What's your biggest failure and what did you learn from that experience? And even if it's already what you said, you know, you can share that too. So Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, losing a stable job that you had for four or five straight years is, is a tough one, you know, uh, especially when you felt very comfortable in, in your, in your, in your life. And, um, most people, think that and and i'm not gonna lie to you when i was working uh it was pretty stable in a sense that like i can golf whenever i wanted to right or like i can pretty much do a lot of things with my time on my free time and um now since i'm actively working as a realtor like real being a realtor doesn't have that passive income you know that i had before right so now i have to actually work on my business and I'm working a hell of a lot more, bro. And uh, the biggest thing, as I mentioned to you guys before, is the learning curve, right? I have to be humble enough to relearn. Um, I can be extremely cocky and say, hey, I have 10 years, decades of years, you know, years of experience. I don't need to learn anything. But in reality, I have to go back and be humble enough 
to relearn and also develop my skills as an agent. Thank you. I so one of my things what I like to do is one time I was teaching, like you know I used to do stuff for this like other local real estate investment association, and we were teaching. We had like this dynamic speaker, and he was teaching for years, and he was like he had just served and gave all the customers, and I, and I was like, um, he asked, he was like, how can I help any of you? I was like, um, how can somebody help you? He said, nobody ever asked me that. All of the time I've been doing this, so I'm stunned. And so I can't remember who it was exactly, but I remember the questions. I was like, wow, it's nobody asking these people how they can actually serve them. And so I decided to incorporate that into my podcast. And I like to ask people that are out there giving, sharing their stories, their testimonials, how they do things in their business. I like to ask them that question. And the way I pose that is, because um, some some people say, oh, I want to pick your brain or and they just, just want to take it's like no yeah. value. So yeah. if somebody sees these episodes or listens to the podcast, I want to know how they can add value to you. So that's what, that's the question. I would like to give you value as well as anybody that might want to work with you or do something with you. They have a way to give you value. So that question is, how can someone add immediate value to you or your business? That's a good question. Um, you know, obviously, the simple answer is. You know, buyer and seller house for, from me. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm trying to be real, like, hey man, I, I, I gotta eat, bro. You know, like I, I gotta make money. But no, in all seriousness, like I think I think friendship is a huge thing for me, and I think community is also really important. So, uh, you know, I'm not always gonna be a perfect fit for everyone, right? Uh, and that's why I always am very consistent. And the way that I act in my Instagram stories, my TikTok videos, and also interviews like this. Because when you see me in person, this is who I am. And it's kind of scary because even my wife gets upset at me because she says, stop talking to me like I'm your friend. That's how that's how consistent I am, bro. Like the way I talk to you and the way I talk to my wife and social media and how I you know, present myself on any platform is all relatively the same. And I, I honestly should treat my wife a lot better, you know, and I think I do, but I think there are moments where it is pretty, <laughs> it is pretty consistent. So, um, Hey man, I, I just love to work with whoever wants to work with a real dude. And that's who okay. I am. Next question is very similar. How can someone add long-term value to you or your business man uh that's a good question so i'm i'm actually i'm actually getting more and more involved with my community uh so i'm a second generation korean and one of the things that i've i've noticed especially in the business world is that there's a huge division between first and second generation koreans especially in the business field Right. And um, I actually, as of yesterday, I believe I am the new vice president of the Korean American Association of Greater Philadelphia. I think I am because I just had a conversation with the president yesterday. And um, uh, that's a huge step towards uh, really uh, inviting people of my of, of, of people like me, right? Um, that is is a Korean American, but I don't necessarily uh, don't speak I don't speak Korean entirely fluently, right? And I think that was one of the things that I was really ashamed of for the longest time. But I'm very actually proud of who I am as a Korean, just in general. And I think for them to recognize that, I think that was a huge step. And I also want to be very inclusive for people who want to be part of that kind of community in the future. And not just Korean, obviously, it can be anything, you know, it can be anything for, for, for those respective organizations. If you need support or if you want to talk about those kinds of things and about the future of your organization, then I would love to have that conversation with you as well. That, that's major. And I remember. Um, so don't let that just happen. You got to like let people know that you've done that. That's major. And I remember, um, you know, I always talk like marketing, like one of the one benefit of marketing sometimes is, like niching down. And I remember in the past you were talking about like working with people of your ethnicity. 
Right. So that's a major badge for you. And I hope you, you know, take advantage of that because that's major. And congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks, yep, absolutely. Uh, next question is, let's see. So those are bonus. Those were my bonus questions. Those are the questions for me that I like to find out how I can help the guests as well as, you know, the, the audience that's listening. Now we get to, you know, real estate. Now we get to the closing table. Right. So that means we're going to like start trying to wrap some stuff up mm-hmm. and I pick some questions. I'm springing these on you because I know you didn't, you know, uh, first one is because I know you have a podcast. So I want to know what are three podcasts you recommend and why three podcasts you recommend to the audience and why. And one of them, if you can't think of three, um, I at least want one to be yours. All right. So sh- thanks, Jerome. I appreciate it. Shameless plug, my podcast, uh, John Lee Real Estate. Uh, definitely going to have you on board. We already talked about it, so we won't get that on the calendar, right? Uh, the one thing I really like about my podcast is that I really try to grab local people and, uh, you know, how many times have you seen someone on the street and you say, Hey, that guy looks familiar. Maybe not that often, but, uh, you know, it can happen. Right. And you're just curious, like, what does that person do? And that's kind of the, you know, that's kind of the background of like, of why I do the podcast to really grab local content and local people and really get to know them. Uh, the second podcast is bigger pockets podcast. I think I've always recommended this to every person who wanted to get into real estate and wanted to learn more. And they do a great job explaining everything from real estate investing to be a landlord. I mean, everything, if you want to do wholesaling and they even have uh, segments of being a realtor too. So that's a great, just real estate, real, uh, real estate resource. Um, Andrew Huberman is another one. I just want to throw that one out there because it's completely different, not real estate related at all. He's a science guy. Uh, he talks about like, um, like all crazy sorts of things, like the proper way to sleep, how to maximize your sleep, uh, proper way of breathing, uh, you know, the science of like coffee. I mean, there's so many different topics. You might even find like, instagram shorts on him or youtube reels on him too like here and there but uh he's great i i I like to listen to him just because uh, i like to be physically active and i do care about my health so if you're health conscious or want to be health conscious he's also a pretty good podcast okay awesome thank you uh next question i know you got i know you got some of these for us three books you recommend to the audience and why (sighs) the three books okay Three uh, because I love Jesus, I'm going to put Bible up there. Perfect. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. That, that's, that's, that's a hell of a book, man. Um, and you know, I don't need to explain it. Um, the real estate Bible, I think everyone knows it as rich dad, poor dad, Robert Kiyosaki. Um, I don't think I have to explain it, but I, if I do, I please personally, tell us why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think personally, guys, if you are ever interested in real estate, and the mindset of real estate investing. If you believe everything that this book writes about Robert Kiyosaki's rich dad, poor dad book, then you are probably destined to be a real, uh, real estate, uh, real, real estate investor. Uh, the third book, uh, Oh yeah. I like Dale Carnegie, uh, how to win friends and influence others. I think that's what the book's called. That was a great book because, I knew I was always an empathetic person. You know, I come with a high level of empathy, but when I read that book, it really proved to me that empathy is actually the way to go and the most, most effective way of communicating with people. So those are my top three books. And, and so you didn't give us an explanation on the Bible. Give us, give us why. Oh, Tell the us Bible. Why. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, man. Like, uh, Jesus is a big part of, of my life, man. I think, I, I think, um, it's, it's really difficult to, to explain to someone who isn't a believer that a man is also a God, like a hundred percent human being is also a hundred percent God. Right. Um, but that's the beauty of faith, right? You have to, you know, I believe everything that's written in that book. 
and there's a lot of stories there's a lot of parables that are so rich and even if you're not a believer right there are so many scholars and so many credible people that are using those stories for themselves and and again that's why i put it on my top of the list and uh, the morning routine that i do you know when i pray and then i do my affirmations the affirmations is actually a time where i spend at least five to ten minutes just reading the bible thanks thanks for sharing that um i appreciate it. and so you mentioned like god and the main thing I, a lot of people don't understand that it's like that's a a lot of people don't understand that. They're like, no, that's blasphemy. So I appreciate you saying that because I understand yeah. what, exactly what you mean. It, it's a hard thing to explain. In fact, uh, yes. that's why a lot of people probably don't believe because yeah. of that reason. But it's hard yeah. to explain. You just got no. And it took me a while to like figure that out. And I've heard, or if I heard somebody saying that like years ago, I would be like, this, this is blasphemy or, you know, <laughs> hypocrite. I would be saying all the same stuff too. But yeah, once yeah. you know, you know. So. Exactly. All right. Um, what's one question you wish I had asked you and how would you have answered? You know, I actually kind of want to go back to the 18 year old self. Okay. Right. And the reason why I want to go back to the 18 year old self is because I had a lot of insecurity, surprisingly. I don't know if people know, but I had a lot of insecurity at kind of that age from 18, probably all the way to early uh, stages of college. Uh, so one thing that I can say to all the youngins out there, like fuck insecurity. Mm -hmm. All right. Like, I don't know if I'm allowed to curse, but fuck insecurity, like be yourself. Um, but you know, when I was out in high school, it was very superficial, right? High school was a very superficial time. Like I really cared what I looked like, the clothes that I wore, right? Like, you know, from, I mean, granted, it was such a nostalgic period of time, right? Where Where'd you go to high it? school? Uh, where? Yeah. Tell him. Tell him high school. Okay. Class of 07. So during that period of time, it was a nostalgic period of time because that's like, for me, it's like Allen Iverson, right? Mm -hmm. Allen Iverson. Oh, like, yep, yep. Yeah. Era. We had, like, and, yeah. All that. We had like yep. Cameron. We had, we had Jay-Z, Nas, like. And then like clothes became really big, right? And all these rappers started to make clothes, right? So we had like, I, I wore Jabot jeans. I, I wore authentic jerseys, like, you know, um, Miskeen hand-painted shirts, right? That whole hip hop culture was just, it, it brings me smiles and memories, but it also brought a lot of superficial things. Yes, it did, yeah. It, it brought a lot. And because it was very superficial, it actually led for me leading into college uh, to also be very superficial and insecure. So like, I think when I was like 19 or 20, I had braces. So, and I'm not talking about Invisalign, like people who got Invisalign, they're lucky, man. Like, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. there was no such thing as Invisalign was when I was like 19 and 20. And like, those are the prime years of like talking to girls, you know, and like mm -hmm. dating, you know, especially in college. And that brought so much insecurity in my life that I didn't actually want to see anybody because of that period of time. So I want to throw that out there, especially for people who are in high school and college, because I have high level of empathy for people at that age, because I was a very insecure person at that time. Thank you, uh, John. How let me see. How can we find out more about you online? Yeah, so I'm literally on every platform. I am on YouTube. I am on TikTok. I am on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. So uh, if you guys want to reach out to me, uh, John Lee Real Estate is where I am on Instagram. I think that's probably the easiest. And I uh, love to chat with anyone who is uh, down and, uh, you know, wants to know more. All right. If you could, I don't know if I implemented this yet when you were, when you came on the first time, but I had this guest, her name's Dewan. She do shirt sales like all over the nation. And I was on her podcast. We did a podcast swap and she was like, you know what I do to my guests? I tell them they can only do one word to close us out. Not a sentence, not a statement, one word. So I've adapted her, her ideology and I use my guests. I give them one word. 
close us out with one word. Love. Love. Now tell us why. Uh, God's love. Simple okay. enough. Yeah. All right, John. John, this was. I appreciate you so much. I'm going to end the show. You're going to stick around. We're going to chat. Thank you for doing this. All right, homeboy. I'll talk to you. All right. Yep.